So friends, today we are going to calculate the sum of the following series. In this uh, series, what we are seeing that the series is going like this 1 plus 1 plus 2 plus 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus dot 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 plus 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus dot 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 plus n. So this series is going in a fashion. See, what is to be noted in this uh, series is that the first term contains a single number, the second term contains two numbers, the third term contains three numbers, the fourth term will contain four numbers and so on until the last number of the, uh, of the series, uh, if you just give the limit to be n, that last term will contain n number of terms. So, in order to calculate the series in this fashion, see there are two loop concepts underlying in this program that is one concept of 1 plus 2 1 plus 2 plus 3 just this natural number summation series is inside the terms and between the individual terms there is a plus symbol there is a plus sign there is a plus sign there is a plus sign and so on so there are two stages of calculations so this Inside is a stage of calculation, the outside is a stage of calculation. So there are two stages in which to calculate the sum of the entire series. So in this case, we are now following the concept of nested loop. What is nested loop? Nested loop is a loop construct and within that another loop construct can be present. And within the second one, a third loop construct can be present and so on and so forth. There are multiple, there can be multiple level of nesting. But for the sake of simplicity, we are now dealing with a two level nesting uh, method, which is used in this program to determine the sum of the series. So this nested loop, what is the nested loop? Let us just get on, get on with the program. Let's just get started with the writing the program so as to uh, make you understand what is the concept of the nested loop and how it is implemented in this program. So let's get started by writing the program. So hash include std io dot h int main then then see how many variables are needed the limit is to be taken by n so this is one variable there will be one iteration variable for the loop there will be one iteration variable for the first loop that is the outer loop the outer loop means the summation these summations one plus this term plus this three number terms then the four number terms so these plus is uh, the outer loop is to be dealt with in the outer loop i for that and for the inner calculations we will take another, yet another loop variable which is j and then we are going to find the sum the inner sum and the outer sum the outer sum will yield you the final result the inner sum will yield you the results in between the respective terms so there will be two types of sum let us write in a manner so as to uh, make it uh, very simple for you to understand that is sum in is equal to zero sum out is equal to zero so there is no need as such to uh, initialize the value of sum in to zero we can just keep it in this manner sum in just declare it, it as sum in because you need to every time you need to uh, initialize this sum in uh, as we enter the loop of the as we enter the outer loop then that's why we are just omitting the initialization part and you can put the is equal to zero part over here that is not a matter of concern but there is no requirement as such to assign any initial value to the sum in at the very beginning of the program so let us just keep it in this manner so int n i j sum in comma sum out is equal to zero so this is to be initialized to zero because it is calculating the entire sum of the series so now we will take the 
input from the user has entered the limit as we have done in the previous classes as well. Enter the limit scan f percent d and percent n. So this is quite simple. Now comes the nested loop logic. Let us write the nested loop logic in this manner. Say suppose for i is equal to for i is equal to 1 i less than equal to n that is the limit i plus plus then you give a brace over here to enter into the body of the first loop so as to cater for the nested loop that is the inner inner loop inside this outer loop let us see this now comes the initialization part to go before we go into the second inner loop sum in is equal to zero so this sum in variable is not needed to be initialized at the very beginning it should be initialized it will just be initialized over here so just you can ignore this is equal to zero over here that's why i've wiped it out so sum in is equal to zero so sum in is equal to zero after that we enter the second loop that is the inner loop for j is equal to for j is equal to one for j is equal to one j less than equal to i j plus plus that is very interesting one i is equal to one i less than equal to n but why here here is j is equal to one and j less than equal to i so this is the interesting part because this i is the for loop which always controls the j loop so outer loop always controls the inner loop so that's why the outer loop variable is i this outer loop is controlled by the limit n and this inner loop and this inner loop is controlled by and this outer loop is controlled by this n and this inner loop and this inner loop is controlled by the value of i that is the i is equal to 1 2 3 and whatever maybe and this inner loop is always controlled by the outer loop variable outer loop variable so this for j is equal to 1 so we are writing over here i less than equal to n and j less than equal to i as to so as to uh, give the control to this i variable to control this inner loop variable j so this j is equal to 1 j less than equal to i j plus plus now we go to the calculation part of the inside calculation part then this will be calculated in this manner sum out plus sum out equal to sum out plus plus j so this is the calculation of the inside part and then we come out of the inside loop and come to the third expression statement or rather the fourth expression statement of the outer loop that is we are now going to calculate the sum out so this is the so we now describe the loop construct in this manner i is equal to 1 i less than equal to n i plus plus then we initialize the sum in over here sum in is equal to 0 and before entering this uh, inner loop we are going to initialize this sum in variable to zero that's why we have not uh, uh, initialized this sum in variable at the very beginning of the program so let us uh, let's uh, get started with the innermost portion for j is equal to one j less than equal to i so this i as this i is being controlled by this n and as similar in the in a similar fashion this j is always controlled by the outer loop variable so j is the inner loop variable which is to be controlled by the outer loop variable i as the outer loop variable is controlled by n the inner loop variable j is controlled by the outer loop variable i so i is going to control whatever the value of j will be uh, inserted at respective positions so so j is equal to 1 j less than equal to i j plus plus inside that there will be one expression statement <coughs> that is excuse me sum in is equal to sum in plus j that is sum in contains 0 then whatever is the value of sum in that is 0 
should be added to the j part j value to give the updated value of sum in so in this manner this inside loop will calculate we will go on calculating this part this part this part as the i value suggests so after that we come out of this inner loop to go to the next statement of this outer loop that is we are going to calculate the sum out now as sum out because the sum out has been initialized to zero sum out plus sum in so that will give you the final output of the program that is the desired result of the program will be found out in this fashion that is sum out will be added to sum in to update the value of sum out and it will go as long as the limit is reached that is the n value is reached so this brings us to the last portion of this for loop of this outer for loop the closing brace after that we are going to print the value of the sum out outside the outer loop to get the result so let me just erase a bit from the above to cater for the next remaining portion of the program so this is next line will be next expression statement will be printf the sum is percent d sum out so sum out is the ultimate result which we are going to calculate so after that return zero and end of the main section of the program so that's uh, the program and let us just put a sample value in order to make you understand sample uh, dry run to make you understand the entire logic of the program so let's get started uh, say about uh, for the sake of simplicity we are taking n value to be 2 so n value to be 2 means we are going to calculate this portion and not beyond that if n value was had been 3 we would have calculated up to this much if n value would have uh, n value had been 4 we would have calculated up to the first second third and fourth term so we are now going to calculate this section this part as you see the expected result should be 4 that is 1 plus 1 plus 2 clearly it is 4 so let us see whether our program yields that value 4 in order to examine or in order to verify or confirm whether we have written it correctly so n is equal to 2 now for i is equal to 1 i is equal to 1 clearly less than equal to 2 correct we enter the uh, outer loop the next line is sum in becomes 0 then we enter the second loop that is the inner loop j is equal to 1 we initialize j is equal to 1 j let us see whether, whether j is less than equal to i i value is 1 1 is definitely less than equal to 1 so we enter the sec innermost loop also then we calculate this sum in is equal to sum in plus j let us see sum in is equal to 0 that is the original value of sum in plus j means 1 that is 1 now we get the sum in value to be 1 now j plus plus j is equal to 2 so 2 is not less than equal to 1 so it is not the condition is invalid now we go out of the j loop we go out of the j loop and calculate this sum out in this fashion sum out was originally zero see sum out was originally zero as we have written in the previous in the declaration of the variable section sum out was zero plus sum in sum in means one so that will give you a result of one so sum out is now one and now we are going to the outer loop once again by incrementing the value of i by unity that is i is equal to now 2 see i was 1 before now is i uh, now i is 2 so if i is 2 let us calculate let us see whether this i is less than equal to n n was 2 uh, 2 is definitely less than equal to 2 then we enter the outer loop once again 
again initialize the value of sum in to be 0 because this sum in portion calculates this portion separately, this, this portion separately, this portion separately in that way. So we have to reinitialize the value of sum in to be 0. That is, we are resetting the value of sum in to 0. So we need to reset the value of sum in so that the previous sum in value does not interfere, interfere with the next uh, portions, next calculations, next calculation part. So that is the important portion, that is the important portion to be kept in mind. So now this sum in is initialized to 0 once again and then sum in is again incremented by j. Now let us see sum in is again 0 plus j means what is the value of j here? j is 2. So j becomes, so j becomes uh, uh, so i is equal to 2. Now we are going to this j portion. Let me just modify a bit. Sum in is 0. After that j is equal to 1. Then we come to this section. Sum in is equal to whatever is the value of sum in is 0 now plus j means 1 that is equal to 2. So in that case again we enter the loop as the condition is satisfied and calculate this sum in once again. So sum in comes to be how much? 1 plus 2 that is 3. That is 3. Now again after incrementing j plus plus j value becomes 3 and we go out of this j loop because the condition is not satisfied. So now we come out of the j loop and we calculate this sum out once again. So sum out was containing which value? Sum out was containing this one. And now the sum out should be added to this sum in and sum in is now three. So now the result of sum out will be the previous value of sum out plus the last value of sum in that is three and you get four. So this four is now the updated value of sum out. Now let us come to the outer loop once again and start to see whether uh, we can enter this outer loop. So i plus plus gives you i is equal to i is equal to 3. i is equal to 3. But our n value was taken to be 2. So clearly i is not less than equal to n. So this condition also breaks and we come out of the outer loop once again and go to the next line. The sum is percent D sum out. So what was the last uh, value of, of the sum out? The last value of sum out was 4 and 4 will be printed as the result. So in this way we can find that we can conclude that uh, the expected result which was 4 tallies with the result got from the calculations following the several expression statements of the program. So our program is quite correct and it is ready to use for the computer system. And uh, if you have any doubts pertaining to this program, you can just post your doubts or queries into the comment section below so that I can address your comments and queries. Thanks.